and welcome back to Three Guys in a White Coat, the podcast where we share our insights on the path to becoming a medical student. So today we're going to be talking about the letters of recommendations part of your AMCAS application, but before we do start, we have a little announcement to make. So Mike, what just, what just happened today? We just finished our first semester of medical school. We just took our last anatomy final. Yeah, we're hey, done. Yeah, we're, we're not oh. going to talk about the test, for no. sure. I don't want to. That's going to be a future three guys in a white coat problem. <laughs> like, we'll deal with that Deal with that next semester. Yeah, I need, I need to, some but... tissues around for that one in case I start crying. <laughs> yeah, but neuro's done. You yeah, know? neuro's done. We're done with anatomy. We're done with MCBG. We're done with BD, which is behavioral oh, development, okay. which is like all our psychology stuff. And we're done with PCM1. Kinda. Don't we take that next semester too? I think it's PCM two at that point. I, oh, no, you no, know what? You're right. Year. It's a continuation. Yeah. Yeah. So but, we got that one. Go, but that's not too, that's your how to be a doctor fun class. How to take histories and do all the physical exams. Oh yeah, we did like our that. first OSCE too. It did. So the OSCE is like you go into this room with a, a standardized patient and a physician, and they lead you through all these exams. Like they say, like inspect this, palpate that, and then you have to know what to do and go through it. That was actually kind of fun. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's essentially like everything you do if you're like going to get a physical from a like primary care provider. Yeah, so we'll, in our next block, we only have a couple more left in this. So we're going to do letters of recommendation, then personal statement, and then we're going to move into block two, which we'll talk about later. Um, but we're, we're pretty close to being done with this whole section. Yeah. And uh, DeYoung, what do, you, what, do you, what do you have to say today? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, it's oh, De- yeah, he it's blew De us off. It's it, to be fair, it is De Young's birthday today, so he's <laughs> he's going out to lunch with his mother. He's gonna call his mother. I know. How dare he blow off this? I know. I know. God forbid. It's like we're getting paid for this. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'll figure that out later. Unless Doctor D says we can find a way to monetize it. Oh yeah, I know. I know. That's one of our professors here does a bunch of YouTube videos. Doctor Desvardis. You guys can actually check him out. You can probably find some good stuff out there that he does for anatomy. Um, I'm helping him to monetize it, so I'm going to be rich someday. Someday. <laughs> but not today. He's probably going to keep all the money from you, just a heads up. So <laughs> I hope not. But um, on that note, let's get into what we're actually going to talk about today. So letters of recommendation. So what I think the big highlights of your letters of recommendation are going to be is that, one, you need to have a relationship with this person. Absolutely. You should not just go up to some random stranger on the street or some <laughs> random doctor that you've never met before and just start asking them, you know, can you write this for me? That's not what you want. Matt, who was one of your letters of recommendation? So one of mine was uh, my PI, my, the guy who ran my lab. Um, and I had worked for him for three or four years before then. So like Mike said, like, it should be someone you really should know, someone that should be able to talk about your strengths and weaknesses and not just give a general overview of, like, you know, they're a good student, they got this grade. They really should be able to talk about your personality, which I think is huge. I agree. I um, think when I interviewed at Loyola, the first thing that um, Dr. Mirza said to me was, this guy that wrote your letter, he said, I'm not going to tell you, uh, like, uh, this person's stuff. I'm going to tell you what I think about this person. So Dr. O, who was one of my biggest mentors back home, he just... He didn't say anything about, like, Mike did this, that. He just went straight into my character, like, who I was, how much effort and thought I put into being, a me- like, a medical student and a future physician. And that's really what you want. You want to make sure it's someone that you have, like, a deeper connection with. Yeah, and you want to be able to stand out. I think, like he said, like, it, anybody can look at, you know, your personal statement. Because usually, and we'll probably get into this a little bit later, when you ask someone for a letter of recommendation, usually give them the personal statement, like, activity oh, yeah. statement, your, uh, like, grades and all that sort of stuff. But... Anybody can take that and form a letter about it, but it takes someone who really knows your character and honestly why you would be a good medical student, what qualities you specifically have compared to everyone else. That's like what really sets a letter apart. I agree. So Matt, when would you think it's a good idea to ask about letters of recommendation? Considering, let's say we were both applying this cycle. For those of you that are, good luck. I wish you nothing but the best, but I'm very glad that I don't have to do this anymore. But if you were getting ready for this, when would you ask? So yeah, so it's what it's December now. Yep. So we'll say like next cycle if your applications are due in one or two, like June, it's like the summer or something like that. Yeah, I think I think the sooner the better. I think they don't necessarily have to start working on it right away, but I think getting it in, like just putting the idea out to them, because um, they're obviously gonna forget about it. Um, you know, you tell them in January, they're not gonna remember it, and then maybe like remind them in March. So I think um, I knew. I knew my PI was going to write me, like I knew I was going to ask him, I knew he would write me one. A couple of the other people or professors that I would have to go through, 
like teaching assistants and like graduate students to get to them. Mm -hmm. And so for those, I did it a lot earlier. So I think like for those ones, I did it maybe February, March, just because it would go through their process and then they have time to work on it. Um, I don't know. What do you think about it? So I honestly would be asking now. Yeah. And if not now, like right when I got back to school in January, I would mm -hmm. start the conversation at least. Because like you just said, you want to start now because you got to remember when you're in college, you only have so many professors or people that you're associated with. And there's a lot of other students that are going to be asking these same people. So you want to be the first one in the door. Absolutely. Like for Dr. Stenberg, when I was at Northeastern, shout out to her. Um, she was my organic chemistry professor. She had like 20 or 30 students ask her to write one. And at some point, like they can't keep doing it. They have to say no. So yeah. you want to make sure you're that first person. So they're already thinking about it. And then they're already working on yours. And I think a great point to this too is, did you feel like kind of awkward, like throughout the process of this is like a time where you have to kind of not badger them, but constantly like kind of check in and be like, Hey, just checking in. Want to make sure everything's okay. Um, do you need anything else from me? Just to kind of yeah. keep it in their brains. So that way they know, Oh, I have to write this. I have still have to work on this. Yeah. The last thing you want is to have asked someone to do the letter of recommendation for you and then come like may and they're then, still not done. Yeah, or, like, they just remembered they had to do it, and you haven't even checked in. Yeah, and I think that's part of, like, making sure who writes your letters you have a very good relationship with, so mm -hmm. you don't feel awkward asking that. Um, it was a little awkward. You know, some of them are, like, very, like, high up. I think one of mine um, was the dean of the School of Public Health at the University of Wisconsin. Like, so they're a busy person. They're busy, obviously. So you don't want to keep bugging them about it. But like you said, you don't want it to get to be May. And then you don't have a letter. I was also going to say something when you said one of your professors had like 20 or 30 students ask her. I actually had my physiology professor um, at University of Wisconsin. I asked him the year before because he made some comment during our class that he only writes 10 letters. And the first 10 people that ask him, those are the ones. So I actually, like that day, I wasn't even applying for another year. I went up and asked him. I said, hey, I would love to get a letter of rec from you because I think you'd be a really good person. And, like, it, you know, it all depends, I think. And, you know, a person like that, that person probably knows that they write a good letter. Mm -hmm. So they know that the only, in order to write a good letter, the max they can do is 10. So I think you were very smart for jumping right on that and being, all right, this guy just said he's only going to do 10. That clearly means he knows what's up with this. So let's go get in touch with this guy now. And even yeah. if you didn't end up using him or something went wrong, you at least have like a start you're going at that point so that's another good that, i think that kind of leads into a good segue how many letters of recommendation did you have Ooh. so <clears throat> at northeastern university we have um, a committee letter so i had to have at least what's a committee letter mike so a committee letter is a group of letters so i had to have three of my teachers two of which had to be science related so i used a biochemistry and organic chemistry and then the other one can be science or some other elective. So I used my English professor because I knew that my verbal score was lower. So I wanted her to talk about that. Like I can analyze literature. I can think outside the box. I knew all those things. So I kind of yeah. wanted to, I wanted to focus in that area. Yeah. And then you had to have at least one physician had to be an MD or a DO. Okay. Couldn't be a PhD. And then after that, you could have two other supplementals. And so that's what, like six. So I had six like letters, okay. and then what happened was the committee reads all six of those, puts them all into like one big letter, and then based off what they know about you and what they've read, they write an introduction, like to oh, it. Oh, okay. So they write like you know Michael is a student student at Northeastern. We have this co op program, so like you're going to see gaps in his in his resume. It's not that he took leave of absence from school. That's part of our curriculum. Okay. And they just kind of explain who you are and what the school's like. Like what goes on there? So that did the committee, and I'm asking this because I did not. Uh, Wisconsin does not have that. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably just because it's a big school. But did that committee letter then take the place of all of your other letters of recommendation, or did you have supplemental letters that were not included in the committee letter that you also sent in? So for AMCAS purposes, it was yeah. one letter. Okay. That my advisors put together and submit. But okay. that one letter had. They had their us. piece and every other letter and okay. all of the letters that I submitted. Okay, so you just had to submit one thing. Yeah. So That's at the end of the day, I sent everything to Northeastern, and then when AMCAST came around, I went to AMCAST, put in Northeastern's thing, and then Cynthia 
loaded the committee letter with everything in everybody it. into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's an important topic because I always remember. I remember seeing. Do you have a committee letter? Like, if you have this, then you only need, you know, whatever, like, one other letter. And I had, honestly, I had no idea what a committee letter was. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of went with it and submitted my letters of recommendation and hoped for the best, to be quite honest. So yours were <laughs> all, um, like, you just submitted all your own letters? Yeah. So oh, I, okay. I had four. Um, I had four letters of recommendation because a lot of the schools that I was applying to, most schools, like, and we can kind of get into this too. Most schools require three, I think. Usually yeah. three. Like that's two science and one non-science letter. Um, and I thought, you know, I would have an extra one just because. And I also did four because I knew there were four people that I know would write really good letters for me and didn't want to just over, like, have too many letters to go through. Yeah, I think that's a, a good distinction. For you out there that are thinking about doing this, you don't want to just fill it up to fill it up. Exactly. If you have six spots to put a letter in, and you only have you have to have four, but you can have up to six, don't just throw in two that are just like whatever, just for the fun of it, because that person's going to read it, and you don't know which one they're going to read first. Yeah. They might read the two that are like blah, and be like, oh, well, this person doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, but exactly. if you have six people that can truly write about you and like give you really good characteristics and all that absolutely use all six and write about you in a different way exactly I think that's, that's key. a key thing so that's what my letters of recommendation so I, I like i said i have four one of them was from my pi another one was from the physiology professor the other one was from the dean of public health and then i had a combined letter um, from a nurse and an md that i went to africa with which i'll talk about that in my we're doing personal statement next week. I'll talk about that later because mm -hmm. that was my personal statement. But let's not forget about to talk about that nurse doctor thing afterwards. Yes, too. we'll talk about that too. Yeah. And so I knew that, you know, my PI was going to write about research. My two, like, um, the faculty members were going to write about me in class. And one of them was, like, talking about a research project. And then I knew the um, MD nurse combination would talk about extracurricular volunteering stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's super important because you don't want to just pick, you know, three people that you work with. And they're all going to talk about the same thing because it's it's essentially something that you could just get out of one letter. Exactly. And you just essentially and then you sound boring at that point. Yeah, exactly. You want to show depth in a lot of different areas. But I'm going to follow up on what you just talked about. Okay. Because that's really important. A you, the physician themselves, doesn't have to write the letter. They just need to sign off on it. And I didn't know that. So when I was at um, Tufts, my nurse manager wrote my letter and then offered to have the, um, the head of neurosurgery sign off on it, who I'd worked with. And I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know you could mm -hmm. do that. I thought I had to get him to write it. And by the time I made that connection, it was too late. But for those of you out there, if you're working under a resident or you're working under a nurse practitioner or a PA or someone who's in the medical field, who's under a physician, they can write the letter and have the physician sign off on it. And it's basically the same thing of the physicians just saying, I agree with everything that this person said that works under me. It's kind of like the transitive pop property in math, yeah. <laughs> kind of like A yeah. said A said B, and I agree with A, so I agree with B. Yeah, something like I don't know. We're not we're not strong suits in math, but yeah, that's why I went to science. Yeah, but no, I mean, like, and it's important too. And like, some physicians might actually like that because then they don't have to spend the time writing a letter. They can have a resident do it, and the resident probably knows you quite a bit better like in that case the resident knows you quite a bit better than the physician did you'll get and they just went letter. through the process yeah and so that's another yeah that's, i mean always ask for help too like mm -hmm. i had md phd students that i asked all the time what who i should be asking and stuff like that yeah and if you ask someone outside of medicine make sure you explain to them what this is because this application's kind of different from other ones where there's certain things that medical schools look for and if you just give it to your average Joe off the street who's never been through it or doesn't understand it, they might not write in the sense that you want. So if you are going to go with someone that isn't in medicine, just make sure you kind of talk to them about it a little bit. Like I remember, uh, so my nurse manager, we sat down for a while and she was like, okay, I can write a letter of recommendation, but what do you like, mm -hmm. what do you need? Yeah. Like, what are the things that you want me to highlight that you want this school to see? And we talked about it and all that. And she wrote me an amazing letter and it was great. Yeah, it's a very different way of writing. I think we'll talk about it next week, too, when we talk about writing a personal statement. Because you want to... There's, like... There was this one of the grad students that I work with gave me this old saying. They were like, you want to show them 
why you're good to be a doctor, not tell them why exactly. you're like a good fit to be a doctor. Don't tell them you're smart. Don't tell them that you're good at like identifying people's emotions. Show them that you have empathy. Yeah, tell a story or something like that. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't need someone that just says, I'm smart. I identify with people. I know how to do this. Any, yeah. Anybody can do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, so doctor always pressed upon me of, Show me, don't tell me. Give me the story. I'll pick out what I want. And if you've done a good job, I'm going to pick out the same things that you're trying to put down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. I think so as well. Um, so I have a question for you, Matt. All right, Mike. I'm ready. Did you ever have anyone like say, oh, yeah, I'll sign off on it. Just go write it. No, but I've heard of people that did that. What's your um, opinion on that? Like personally? I, I don't know. I have, I have like kind of mixed opinions on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if I were to do that, like, I hate talking about myself. I'd be so bad at it. Yeah, my letter would be god-awful. Um, there are, like, certain situations where I kind of understand that. And we kind of talked about it. You know, if you're asking, like, the chair of the Department of Neurosurgery to write your letter, he's either going to... is Well, one, he's going to say no. Two, he's going to Unless say, you know him, like, really, really well. Yeah, unless you know him really well. Two, he's going to say, write it yourself. Or, like, in your case, you know, have, like, have... Has someone else? Write yeah, it. someone else writes it. Um, I don't like it, but I understand why it happens, and I know people that have had it, done, like had that situation happen to them, and like they did fine. They got they got in. I just think it's more. I think it's harder to tell stories from like that person's perspective about you. I don't know. What do you think about it? I will agree with you one hundred percent. I couldn't do it personally. If if someone had said to me. Go write the letter. I'll sign off on it. All that stuff. I can't do that. Like I'm not good at that. I want someone who's going to write about me and take it out of my hands. Yeah. But I definitely have friends that are really good at writing about themselves, and it's not that they didn't lie. Like they just wrote it from their perspective. And I don't. I don't see a problem with that. Like mm-hmm. I don't think some people will say it's cheating or it's not authentic. And I disagree with that because if you write something that's like not authentic, the like your PI or supervisor who's reading over it to sign off at it isn't going to sign off on it. And even if they do, it's going to, and even if you like get an interview, it's going to come out in your interview. Like there's so many like steps where like, I always look at it as like, it's like a confirmation of like who you are Yeah. and like you're writing about it in your activity statement, in your personal statement, in your other letters of recommending. Like if nobody else mentions that in your other letter, then are they really going to believe it or not? Yeah. Like I had a friend in college who I think for two of his, not for medical school, he was applying to PhD programs. But he had two people on separate occasions said, you write the letter, I'll sign off on it, all that kind of stuff. And, I mean, he's a really skilled writer. Yeah. And he wrote his letters of recommendation based on, like, what he thought that they would appreciate, gave it to the PIs, and they were just like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I would have written. Yeah. And then just signed off on it. So I don't really see an issue with that. Um but no, and it's so common. Like it, it happens. It's one of those things that, like, you know, it happens because people just don't have the time to write a letter about it. Yeah. You know? So I would say for those of you out there, if you get offered that, I'd say it's more of a personal question. I don't think there's a right or wrong to it. Yeah. If you can write about yourself and you're confident in that, I s- go for it. Worst comes to worst, you write it, and then the guy reads it or the girl reads it and says, no, nah, that's that's trash. I don't want that. Yeah, exactly. And then you find someone else to do or something like that. But I think the key to this is you got to start early because the last thing you want to do is be trying to do all the stuff at the very end and trying to put like your application together the night before it's due. Because like we've talked about yeah. before, you need to have this stuff ready to go. So on the very first day that application portal opens, you hit submit and yours is the first paper out of all those stacks. Yeah, that's impressive if, impressive if you can do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I always, like, I was told, like, if you submit in the first week, like, you're golden. You don't want to wait till like, three weeks, four weeks later, because the lo- longer you wait to submit, the longer time it takes to get processed. The more people that have put in. Yeah, the more people that they're already looking at. More interviews have probably gone by mm-hmm. at that point. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you a question. I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll figure it out later. Okay. But but going back to your PI, like how do you, I, and I, we kind of talked about this in like previous ones a little bit, but let's touch upon it again because I feel yeah. like it's important here. How did you feel like you made that first connection with that, with the letter of recommendation person? With like, my PI? Yeah, pick one and just kind of talk about it a little bit. Mm. So I think I'll talk about, because I think, I think like a PI is like a very common one to do mm-hmm. if people have it. Like if you work in a research lab and usually they're very familiar with, 
the process of going to grad school, med school, like they understand, and they've probably written quite a few letters in the past. So I'll do the one, um, my volunteer one. So this was, I have a minor in global health and medicine from Wisconsin. And as part of that program, um, we had to do a summer like volunteer like kind of excursion type of thing and i'll talk more about it later but um the nurse that i went with um i knew she would provide like a very different perspective of me than like anybody else and so i brought i honestly just brought it up to her i just emailed her and said you know or i talked to her in person i think at this point and said i'm very interested in going to medical school i understand like i know that you've um been uh been uh, if current medical students have gone on your trip in the past. I know you've written them letters. Would you, do you have time to write me a letter um, for medical school? And usually these people are like very willing to do it. And honestly, they've done it before. And mm -hmm. I think that's important. You got to find someone who's done it before as well, because then there's less that you have to explain about the actual process. Yeah, I'm gonna share an opposite story of what I uh -oh. don't suggest doing that I did do. Uh -oh. so, hey, it doesn't uh, matter. You're still here. Like that's, but I, that's what matters. But I also think this is a good representation of how if you invest early, it will help you later. So I remember when I was applying this cycle, I kind of decided pretty late that I wanted to do it. And I had told Dr. O that I really wasn't that interested. I was still kind of thinking about it. I didn't really know what was going on. And then, you know, something just happened in my life and I was like, no, like, this is what I need to do. This is where I want to go. I've put so much effort into it. It's what I want to do. And I set up a, a phone call with him for like two weeks later. Yeah. And on the phone call, we were talking about it and I was somehow I want to go to medical school and all this stuff. And he was just like, okay, like, that's awesome. And then I asked him for a letter of recommendation. It was kind of out of the blue. Yeah. And I think he was kind of hesitant on it at first because of how I approached it. And that's not how I approached any of my other ones. But I'm sharing this with you because I want you to understand why you shouldn't do it this way. Okay. <laughs> and he, like, kind of hesitated and, like, thought about it and then asked me a few more questions and then agreed to it. And then we worked from there. And I only had, like, a month to get it done at that point because I was so close to the deadline. Yeah. But um, I... Th I'm trying to point out to you guys that because I had, we've talked about Dr. O a lot on here from my perspective, and because I had worked up a relationship with him for so long and he knew me very well, I think that I like kind of dipped into like my savings account on that part <laughs> and he was just like, yeah. okay, I'm going to do this for him. I trust him. I know this is what he wants to do. I know he's going to give me his best effort. This wasn't the right way to do it, but I know that if he's doing it this way, he's crunched for time. And this is what he really wants to do. Yeah, it's something that he really, really cares about. And he really sees himself doing this. And, like, you know, if you are crunched for time, so what? But, like, I was getting the point. I was going to make a point earlier in saying that I think it's important to also not ask them too early. Yeah. Because they're going to... This, this is a sweet spot for sure. Yeah, because most people are going to want your personal statement or at least mm -hmm. a decent draft of your personal statement. Oh, that's an excellent point that we did not bring up. Yeah. So when you ask them, they're going to want your personal statement. Some of the, I don't know, they, some of them might want your like activity statement. Um, yeah. and then usually, well, most of the time they don't talk about your grades anyway. So like usually like, but mine always wanted my grades. They did. Yeah. So mine wanted my personal statement and like my CV because mm -hmm. um, I had like publications. And so they like they do want those, so those do need to be in good shape. And I didn't start writing my personal statement like really heavily until maybe March mm -hmm. or February. Um, but you go through a lot of drafts of that thing. I think I had like I think I had like twenty. Yeah, I I don't even want to look back at my computer <laughs> and find them. But like I think I had like two different actual topics mm -hmm. and like thirty. Different oh, my drafts my topic changed a bunch, and we'll go into that more yeah. on the next podcast for sure. But it's important to have a decent copy of that when you ask them. So yeah. don't ask them like a year in advance and then like say you need them to write you something and not have anything for it. And then also be prepared. They might ask you to write some like highlights of what you did with them, of what you think is the focus. So like for Dr. O, he yeah. told me that I had to go and write, you know, my highlight reel of like what I had done with him, what I thought like the biggest things were, the things that I did that he doesn't think that I may have noticed or known that I did behind the scenes to make things happen and all that stuff, just so that way he could get like a full perspective of what I was actually doing. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about combined letters of rec from two people? Because I brought it up with like a nurse. I, have an, I had one that was from a nurse and an MD. So I didn't have any. Okay. So I think some people, that gets brought up sometimes. Like if you have two people write you a letter. Um, and I think, there, I think there's good things and there's bad things about it. Um, in my situation, I knew that 
I was going to ask, I wanted to ask both of them for a letter because I knew they would both write like me a very good letter. But I also didn't want to take up, you know, you only get to upload a certain amount and you only get to send a certain number of letters. So I didn't want to choose them. Um, so I had a combined one with the nurse and the MD that I went to Africa with. But there's a counter situation to it where I talked with my PI about this as well, where I worked um, with a scientist for quite a bit of time and I worked directly with my PI. And there's this counter situation where he brought it up that if there are two names on this letter, then it almost seems as though like the, the PI or the more superior person does not know you as well. So I think that's a very like fine line to walk. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to do either one because I was going to It's a to personal choice again. It's yeah, kind of like writing exactly. your own. Like you do you, it if you want to. Yeah, if you were going to ask letters from like the, from these two people, like sure, maybe may put them both on. You know, if they're both like MDs, like it's not really going to matter. But if you're you know, asking for a letter from like a graduate student that you work under and you want their name and you know, the senior scientist um, whose lab it is, probably just stick with that one name. And then uh, another question to you. Did you get to read any of yours before? Because uh, technically, quote unquote, these are blind. You don't know. Or we'll put it this way. Did you know of anybody that got to see theirs before they got submitted? So, yeah, I know of a few people that did get to see theirs. Mm -hmm. um, What's your opinion on that? I don't know. I mean, like, so the nurse who I got it from, I'm going to be talking about her a lot. Um, but she sent them to people because, and this is like a funny true story, in one of um, her letters from a past student, he was going to, I think he had a master's in public health already. And instead of typing out master's in public health, she wrote master's in pubic health. Oh, that's so, a good one that he got to see. So yeah, exactly. Like, she, and she's like, from then on, like everyone sees them because I don't want to make mistakes. Okay, yeah. so hers is more like I think it's a, I think it's good to be like a proofreading thing. Mm -hmm. And because I mean, like most of the stuff, if they're going to show you stuff, like you should, be, you should be able to like exemplify that already without really changing anything. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. shouldn't see like in someone's that like, oh, this person's a really like a really compassionate, really good hard worker, and be like, oh well, crap, now I got to change my entire personality to be a hard worker. I think it's good in proofreading. I don't, I don't think it really makes a difference. I don't know. I don't think so either. I I personally don't see an issue with it. Yeah. Uh, besides, like you get like an ego boost. Like, yeah, it makes you, you read these letters better. of people and they're like, oh, they're great at this, they're great at that, da da da, da. and then you're kind of just like, oh yeah, I'm an amazing person, da da da. Besides that, like. I don't think it helps you. I don't think it gives you an edge. Maybe you might say, oh, you know, I really wish that you had highlighted this thing, but I don't think there should be a problem with that. Well, and they're but, writing about stuff that's all in your, well, they should be writing about stuff that's like all in your personal statement anyway. Like, I don't know. I mean, I didn't see any of mine, but did, I don't think that like interviewers are going to ask you in, like, they're going to be like, well, in Dr. So-and-so's letter, they said no, you did this, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's not going to Oh, well, I mean, they, they might, like, say, like, oh, you worked on this project with so-and-so. They might say that. But that could also be something that you're probably going to talk about later. Yeah. You know, I don't, they're not going to bring in a specific, like, thing from your, um, from your letter and be like, they said you did this. Can you talk about yeah. it? Yeah. They're not, like, I mean, obviously, if your letter writer writes a big fat lie and you haven't looked at it and they say, like, oh, they discovered the cerebellum. Then the person's going to be like, oh, really? I'll take credit for that. Thank you very much. You discovered the cerebellum. Where are your awards? Why are you not in these books? Like, that's, yeah. that's obvious. But hey, remember how we said we weren't going to talk about school? Oh, yeah. Sorry. And we, just, we just took neuro. That's why we're all kind of <laughs> talking about cerebellum and fistigial and all that fun stuff. Dentate and all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. All those tracks, those cerebellar yeah, tracks. Yeah, we had a lot of tracks. I hate those. We yeah. Didn't, they didn't test us on it either. Sorry, we're going off on a little bit of a rant. <laughs> it's been a really long two weeks, if you can't tell. Yeah, we had what? We're going to segue for a second here. Sorry, but like, what do we have this week? We had a BD test. Yep. And then that was followed an hour later by our like radiology yeah, imaging like I, test. Yeah, it was like identifying CTs, MRIs, like all that kind of stuff. Before that, we had um, our OSCE. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was the week before. I forgot about yep. that. And then we had our neuro final today. We Then, like, the week before the OSCE, was that when we had that PCM exam? Yeah, because well, that, that was before Thanksgiving where we had the PCM exam. We had an, an, a different anatomy exam Dude. and um, something else, too. We had, like, we had a, a, we had a quiz in we standardized quiz. patients. Oh, yeah, that's me, too. Good and, God. Uh, yeah, it's it, we we've earned this this time off. We've done a lot since July. I know. I'm get <laughs> so for those of you, I'm going back to Boston today. I'm getting out of here after this. I'm not. I'm here for a little while. <laughs> yeah, you and De Young will be here, but you guys are going out tonight. You guys will have fun. Yeah, I gotta make sure his friends don't kill him. Yeah, for those of you who have seen like the you know Harry po the sixth Harry Potter movie, 
this is going to be that situation where De Young is Dumbledore and his <laughs> his, his friends are Harry. Just keep keep feeding, keep uh, making him drinks. So I'm going to try and prevent oh that from happening. <laughs> well, I hope for those of you that are listening have seen that movie and understand that reference because it's a, it's a, an amazing reference. If, if you don't, go look it up. Like Harry Potter and I don't even remember the sixth Harry Potter movie or Half Blood Prince, and it's like Harry. Oh, that's the, the one. Yeah, it's like Harry making Dumbledore. And it's drink even better for De Young because De, De Young is an is like a Harry Potter fanatic. He loves like Harry Potter the what's the new ones that just came out Fantastic Beasts the Fantastic yep. Beasts and all that stuff and he actually just went to what the Harry Potter orchestra thing the other night yeah Harry like the Chicago Symphony did like a Harry Potter where like they played the music and they watched the movie at the same time which is super oh wait cool. really yeah they watched the movie I didn't realize that oh I didn't know that either yeah so uh, yeah uh, what were we well, talking about yeah. I, I actually I, I, I think know. that we we covered a lot on the letters of recommendation I don't really think there's much else for us to go over. Yeah, I don't think so either. And like we say all the time, if you guys do have further questions about this stuff, DM us, get us on Instagram, get us on Facebook, get us whatever, call me, find me, do whatever you got to do. Call me, beat me if you, you want to reach, reach me. me. Um, but like we always here. said, you know, if you're trying to find us on Instagram, if you haven't found us yet, just remember it's um, the number three guys underscore and underscore a underscore white underscore coat. Three guys and a white coat. That's the Instagram. Come find us. Come check us out. We post up on there, like, study habits, images from anatomy class. Not gross images. We can't do that. Reminders to take breaks. Yeah, reminders to take breaks. Um, take breaks, especially if you guys are studying for finals right now. Take breaks. Oh, yeah. It's important. Uh, yeah, you have to. You can't just keep going 24-7 all day, every day. Make sure you go do something. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that before, too. Oh, well, that was in the last podcast. We talked about taking breaks. Oh, yeah, that's right. We've covered a lot for you guys. Jeez. I can't believe it's kind of funny. We're coming in on the narrowing stretches of this session of the podcast, and we just finished our first semester. Yeah. So we're still. That's kind of scary. Yeah. One one eighth of the way to becoming a doctor, Michael. Yeah, I know it's wild. But um, so you guys, it, wait, is the email up yet? Do we have the email too, or are we it, still, it, we're still working on that? It's up, but I don't remember it. Oh yeah, that's the right. The top of my head. Okay, we'll figure that out. Later. So find us on Instagram first, and then I will get that up and all that stuff, and we'll go from there. But uh, I got to get to my flight, you guys. I need to get back to Boston. So from three guys in a white coat, I'm Mike signing off. This is Semler signing off, and I'm sure DeYoung is somewhere. And I'm Matt DeYoung from yeah. three guys in a white coat signing off. My voice sounds a little different. Yeah, wow. Matt, you, you feeling okay, bud? <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. Have a good time. Have a good holidays. Or if, well, it's holidays for us, but enjoy whatever you're doing at this point, your breaks, whatever's going on. If you're in classes, studying, have fun. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye.